last session we stopped here with efficient debt and we learned about uh, extensions of feature pyramid network and in particular this was about by fpm so i want you guys to remember this for the next slide because we are going to need it let's move on to yolo version 4 and then there is going to be a yolo version 5 these days which we are not going to be able to cover uh, to be honest this is not the efforts of a single person if you are the first person that you're solving a problem like object detection uh, you're going to be writing a paper or coming up with ideas that are simpler to explain but as you go towards making your method more and more efficient and more and more accurate more and more performant then you're going to be borrowing ideas from different places and actually yolo version 4 is a collaborative effort we can find the code online the github repository and there is a lot of ideas from the literature uh, being introduced to this field by different people so it's not the efforts of a single person but actually this figure is very interesting it's going to give us a big picture of the type of topics we have covered so far uh, you're going to have two major classes of object detectors some of them are one stage some of them are two stage detectors the input to your architecture could be either images or image patches or a pyramid of images that's the input and that usually goes through a backbone and your backbone could be vgg16 resnet resnext and different versions of darknet then you're gonna have a neck actually the last paper that we just saw was about designing your neck or the neck of your neural network and it was extensions of feature pyramid network which are trying to make these features semantically stronger even the ones that are closer to your image then there is uh, pa net and the other one is by fpn that we covered these two we covered last session this is pa net which not only you're going from top to bottom you're also going from bottom to top and then this is by fpn that we learned last session and then what else uh, now that your features are semantically more stronger then you have to two choices and depending on these two choices you're either going to end up being a one stage detector or two stage detector some of them are dense predictions like region proposal network that we saw so per each pixel of your features you are predicting a box you have anchors or you can treat each one of these pixels as your observations rather than the anchors being your observations and in that case uh, you have something like of course which are anchor free your low ssd retina net all of them belong to this category of dense predictions and it's dense because you're doing dense predictions per each pixel of your feature maps at different layers and some other ones the two stage detector ones are sparse you need to know the coordinates of a proposal a proposed box then you're going to crop that region push it through some architecture or the leftovers of some architecture and that's going to give you the corresponding prediction adjustments to the coordinates or the corresponding class so these ones the two stage detectors are going to rely on external proposals or proposal algorithms which could be region proposal network and in the end you're going to end up with an algorithm after fine-tuning these choices that you want to make which is going to be real time really fast it's going to be able to process videos so anything above 30 frames per second is video so we are not going to notice as human being and it is continuities and these are the average precision so yolo version 4 is doing really good and this was efficient debt that we covered last session so what are these uh, contributions i think once i unravel the rest of this slide you're gonna appreciate the trouble that we went through this semester you're gonna appreciate it more why we covered so many papers the first one is about the backbone so you're gonna change the architecture of the backbone to include some cross-stage partial connection so this is something new for that you need to read the paper the next one is spatial pyramid pooling for the neck and we covered spatial pyramid pooling in this course then there is path aggregation network and we covered actually by fpm which is an extension of path aggregation network the head is yolo version 3 
we covered it, so it's the same head. What are the other con uh, contributions when it comes to YOLO version 4? We covered a lot of uh, data augmentation techniques. So data augmentation techniques are, you can think of them as a bag of freebie. What does it mean? You're going to reap the benefits for free. As soon as you add more data or you augment your data, your neural networks are going to like it. They're going to help them generalize better. And therefore, you're going to get some improvements for free. You are not changing any architecture or anything in specific to object detection. Cutmix is an extension of mix-up. So it's a combination of uh, uh, when you are dropping some portions of your image and then you're combining it with mix-up. I'm going to go through it. Um, mosaic data augmentation is an extension of cut mix. Drop block regularization, you're dropping uh, some blocks in your residual neural networks at random. It's very similar to uh, dropout rather than dropping connections and weights. You're going to drop an entire block of a residual connection. Then there is class label smoothing. We covered it, and we covered it when we were covering uh, inception architecture. So these are label smoothing. Sometimes you're going to tell your neural network to predict something at random, and that way you're regularizing it towards uniform distribution. So those are for free. Bag of spatials are dedicated to YOLO version 4. One of them is mesh activation. It's a smooth approximation of ReLU. It's like switch activation. Then there is a CSP connections. You can read the paper for that. You can have multi-input weighted residual connections. So these are dedicated to the architecture of this paper. There is some other bag of freebies for detectors. For the backbone, your objective function is classification because later on you want to do transfer learning. For the detector is entire architecture and fine tuning. We saw that we were always debating when it comes to reg regression of what type of loss to use. Should we use L1? Should we use L2? Should we use smooth L1? So there are these loss functions based on intersection over union, and it's continuous, and therefore we can backpropagate through it. There is mini-batch normalization, and it's cross-mini-batch normalization. Drop block, again, you're using it. There is mosaic data augmentation. Self-adversarial training, or we covered them when we were going through adversarial examples. What, what do you do when it comes to self-adversarial training? You have an image, you perturb it a little bit in an adversarial fashion, you add that new data to your training data, and then you re retrain. And this is self-adversarial training. And we were using it as a defense mechanism against adversarial examples. You can use it to regularize your neural network as well. Then there is uh, eliminating grid sensitivity, using multiple anchors for a single ground truth. These are useful techniques to know about. There is cosine annealing. I recently added a slide to the course. Next year, I'm going to go through it. But this is about your learning rate schedule. This is one way of scheduling your learning rate. Rather than having those step schedulers, you can have a cosine annealing scheduler. And then it's always a good practice to come up with optimal hyperparameters using your validation data. And there is also random training shapes when it comes to the resolution. And then for the bag of spatials, there is mesh, mesh activation again, spatial pyramid pooling, we covered it, spatial attention modules, we covered them when we were covering large networks and attention mechanisms, path aggregation network, and intersection over union and actually non-maximum separation based on intersection over union. So you see, it's a lot of effort, and it's not the efforts of a single person. And all of these efforts are going to help you push the state of the art. You're pushing this curve to the right up. So one of them that is worth going through is this cut mix. We learned about mix-up. Mix-up was when you had two images, and then you were reporting the convex combination of those two images. It could be cat and dog. And then you were also having a convex combination of the labels, which is something between cat and dog. For cut mix, you have two images. So now you're working with two images rather than one. You take a portion of one image, a portion of another image. Uh, the first image, you're going to remove that portion. 
And then you are gonna copy and fill this uh, empty box with another image, with some portions of another image. This is useful when it comes to object detection, but this is not done. It's not just copy and paste here or crop and paste. The corresponding label for it, because now you are training your backbone, the corresponding label for it is going to be a convex combination of the label for this image and the label for the other image. And how do you set that proportion? You're going to set it according to the area of the box that you removed and replaced with something else. So mix up and cut mix are based on two images. You take two images and then you're going to have, you're going to adjust the image and then you're going to adjust the corresponding label. Mosaic is an extension of cut mix. It's good for detection and blurring is another idea. How do they help your classification? We know it's gonna help the detection system. How does it help the classifier, the backbone? You can remove mix up, you can replace it with cut mix, add mosaic, you don't need to do blurring. You do label smoothing and then you use mesh activation rather than swish. And then you're gonna be able to improve the accuracy of your classifier. And then once you have a better classifier, you're going to have a better feature extractor that you can take as the backbone for your detector. Any questions about YOLO version 4? Was everything clear? Okay, perfect.